Chapter 5, Learning Objective 7. Explain and identify the entries for purchase and sales transactions in a periodic inventory system. As we saw, the perpetual inventory system maintains a continuous real-time balance in both merchandise inventory, a balance sheet account, and cost of goods sold, an income statement account. The merchandise inventory general ledger account balance should always equal the value of the physical inventory on hand at any point in time. The cost of goods sold general ledger account balance should always equal the total cost of merchandise inventory sold for the accounting period. The accounts should perpetually agree, hence the name. An alternate system is called the periodic inventory system. A periodic inventory system does not maintain a constantly updated merchandise inventory balance. Ending inventory is determined by a physical count and valued at the end of the accounting period. The change in inventory is recorded only periodically. A cost of goods sold account is not maintained in a periodic system. Instead, cost of goods sold is calculated at the end of the accounting period. When goods are purchased, the cost of merchandise is recorded in a purchases account in the general ledger rather than in the merchandise inventory account as is done under the perpetual inventory system. The purchases account is an income statement account that accumulates the cost of merchandise acquired for resale. Here's what an entry to record the purchase of merchandise on credit would look like under a periodic inventory system. Instead of a debit to merchandise inventory, we debit the purchases account, but we still credit the account's payable account. Any purchase returns or purchase allowances are accumulated in a separate account called Purchase Returns and Allowances, an income statement account, and recorded with a debit to accounts payable, just like with the perpetual system, but with a credit to a Purchases Returns and Allowances account instead of merchandise inventory. This would be a contra account to the cost of goods sold. Another contra expense account, Purchase Discounts, accumulates reductions in the purchase price of merchandise if payment is made within a specified time period in the supplier's invoice and is recorded with a debit or decrease to accounts payable and a credit or increase to the purchase discounts account instead of merchandise inventory. When it comes to shipping costs, an income statement account called transportation in is used to accumulate transportation or freight charges on merchandise purchased for resale. Transportation in is used in calculating the cost of goods sold on the income statement and is recorded with a debit or increase to the transportation in expense account and a credit or decrease to cash or a credit or increase to accounts payable depending on whether or not the shipping costs are paid immediately or on account. At the end of the period, cost of goods sold must be calculated. The balance in merchandise inventory must be determined so a physical count of inventory is performed. The total value of the inventory as identified by the physical count becomes the ending balance in the merchandise inventory. Cost of goods sold can then be calculated like this. We start with the beginning merchandise inventory based on the last period's inventory count. Then we add the net cost of goods purchased and deduct the ending merchandise inventory balance based on the inventory count to end up with cost of goods sold. The net cost of goods purchased is calculated as the total purchases minus any purchase returns and allowances minus any purchase discounts, which results in a subtotal called net purchases. Then we would add any transportation in costs, and that would result in the net cost of goods purchased. Clearly, this system is a bit more work and manual, and hopefully you can see the benefits of the perpetual inventory system, even for smaller, less sophisticated businesses. In the periodic inventory system, the balance in the merchandise inventory account does not change during the accounting period. At the end of the accounting period, the balance in merchandise inventory in a periodic system is the beginning balance. In order for the merchandise inventory account to reflect the ending balances determined by the physical inventory count, the beginning inventory balance must be removed by crediting merchandise inventory, and then the ending balance is entered by debiting it. This is accomplished as part of the closing process that we can illustrate here for Norva Inc. On the left, we have the adjusted trial balance at December 31st, 2023. The first closing entry is to close the merchandise inventory and expense accounts, all of which are normally debits. So we will credit all of them 
and then debit income summary for one amount of $15,200. Then we close the credit balance accounts, including revenues, merchandise inventory, and purchase returns and allowances, all adding up to $16,200, which is credited to income summary. Third, we close income summary to retain earnings. The balance and income summary should then be $1,000 on the credit side, based on $16,200 in credits, less $15,200 in debits. Finally, we close dividends to retain earnings, with a debit of $500 to retain earnings, and a credit of $500 to the dividend account. When the closing entries are posted, and a post-closing trial balance is prepared as shown here, notice that the merchandise inventory account reflects the correct balance based on the physical inventory count.